What's up guys, today I get to wear sunglasses inside because I have beautiful lighting directly behind the camera from our sun, but it's burning my retinas to a crisp. Today we're talking about GoPros. I wanna show you guys how to optimize the settings in your little powerful action camera so you can get some really crisp, clear, sharp, and beautiful footage for your own vlogs. Who says GoPros aren't vlogging cameras? This is my Hero 6. Now, at the time of filming, this was GoPro's most up-to-date action cam. It's their sort of premier flagship camera, and it has come packed full of a lot of features that make it particularly good for vlogging, what I do, which is sort of adventure vlogging, and just a general camera that you could take around and get some pretty damn good quality videos from. But there are a few tips and tricks you need to know to get the most out of it. This also works for the Hero 5. Most action cameras will come with a resolution setting, a frame setting, and, and whatnot, but there's a couple of things that make the GoPro special, and they all reside over here on the right-hand side of your screen. Once you open it up, you'll be given an opportunity to turn on a thing called ProTune, and this is what you should be doing if you want to get the best out of your action camera. If we turn this on, this is the settings I had it set to for my latest shoot, and I'm going to run you through what these do. The first setting you're going to see is shutter. Now I usually leave this to auto unless I want to do something very specific and basically what it means is that you can up the shutter speed to whatever you want uh, at quite a, an extensive range. Now the faster the shutter speed the more flicker you can occur in your video so that's why I like to leave it to auto. It's something you don't have to think overly much about but it is an option there that if you did need to fiddle with it. Now, ISOs here are very important. What this does is makes the sensor inside the GoPro more sensitive to light. So the higher the reading of your ISO, the more sensitive your camera will be in the dark. It does come at a cost of a thing called grain though. So the higher your ISO, the grainier your video footage. It's a bit of a give and take. I have my ISO set to a minimum of 100, which is really good uh, for doing things in broad daylight where, where it, the lighting is extremely extremely bright uh, and can wash out your image. So a minimum ISO of 100 means the GoPro will automatically revert to that 100. An ISO maximum of 800. Now, the reason I've got it set to 800 is because it gives me a very crystal clear, sharp image but it doesn't come at the cost of overly much grain. To put it in perspective, to do nighttime photography on a DSLR, I would have this set to or between 1600 and 2000 uh, if I was taking a nighttime photo on a DSLR. So with 800 being where I have my GoPro set, the very next one is 1600. So realistically, I could go out and film stars with the GoPro and it should be able to pick them up. But again, it will come at the cost of that grain. So leaving it at 800 will give you a nice, crisp, sharp, clear image. The audio file here is an incredibly ingenious little thing, although it is somewhat useless on the GoPro. Let me explain. What it does is it gives you the ability to create a separate audio track that you can then edit in post if you want to. The problem with this is that if you were going to do that, you'd probably be buying an external mic anyway, and I would suggest doing that. However, the option is there. So if you want to get particular bits of audio and edit them, you can do that. And this is where your settings come in. So I've always got it set to off because I do use external microphones. Otherwise, you could have it done to low processing, which means that you get a more realistic uh, sound wave file of what was going on in the ambient area. Uh, then medium, they add a little bit of editing in there and, and it basically comes back to you an audio track that has been somewhat edited by the GoPro device itself. And then high is pretty much exactly what you would get from the GoPro if you just left audio on auto, but as a separate file. Now, GoPro Color, this is one that is extremely important, very interesting to talk about. Now, GoPro Color is basically a color grading system. It's very good. It will make your footage look extremely creamy, milky, nice, and delicious. 
However, if you want to do edits in post where you want to add your own color overlays to give a particular film a certain mood, say you wanted to make it all dark and moody, maybe you wanted to make it feel like the sun was absolutely baking that day, well, GoPro color already overlaid onto your film could wreak havoc with those overlays, and that's where you want to film in flat. So if you film in flat, what it does is it changes the color to a more realistic color, and then you can add in your own color gradients in post without getting any funky effects. When we go into the sharpness setting, this is an important one to give your video a very interesting look. If you have it set to high detail, it means that you're going to get a very sharp clear image but sometimes it can overstretch that it can really make it look fake it can make it look too detailed and you can sometimes start to obscure some of the lines that you need in there um, with this and it will also suck out a lot of the saturation in your video which means that the colors will fade away a little bit i almost always have mine set to medium medium seems to be a very very good range where you get just the right amount of color in it you don't lose overly much detail and it looks pretty good in some situations a low color setting is absolutely ideal. It very much depends on your environment and it's always good to do a bit of a test video so you can see the difference between what your low, medium, high settings look like. But as a starting point, like everything, the medium I found is the way to go. The last thing we want to talk about is white balance. Now, white balance is basically how much light, uh, or how white the whites are going to be in your video. And you can see as I scroll through, it makes a very big difference depending on what you land on to what it's going, your final product's going to look like. Now, you, the recommendation I'll go with, you can either shoot in native, which will give you a sort of a more true version of what's going on in the image, or you can set it to auto. And I found that the auto, to be honest, is a lot better than mucking around with the white balance unless of course you want to do things in post if you're going to do things in post i would set it to native and then add my own overlays on top of it one of the last things i want to talk to you about is the aspect ratios you've got three different options here which is super view wide and linear now if we go to super view look how much of that room it picks up considering it's only about 30 centimeters away from that sign but if you note the door, these are straight lines and we start getting a massive fisheye in them. And this can really degrade the overall look of your video when you go to post. So I always shoot in linear because when you shoot in linear, all the lines remain nice and straight. And when you're shooting in an urban setting, especially the last thing you want to do is see a door frame that's bent like a banana like this uh, in your video, it just doesn't look very good. So shooting in linear makes a massive difference. And the added advantage with shooting in linear is you can even zoom in a little bit uh, digitally, which is a fantastic function to have. So if you are trying to get a little bit further depth of field or you're trying to really frame up a shot, you have now got a zoom function on your GoPro. I think that's a really cool addition. Shooting a wide angle I found is okay for doing things like time lapses of skylines and horizons. Maybe you want to pick up a, a massive sunrise that's coming up or shooting in wide looks really, really good. And out in nature, you're less likely to notice the bends. And in wide, those bends, those fisheye effects aren't as big. To explain the audio features on a GoPro, I have to do a little bit of an experiment. So we're going to use two cameras here. It's going to be a bit of an interesting thing. All the settings I'm running on this camera are the ones I just showed you to set up, so I haven't fiddled with the audio settings at all. Here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this camera on, and I'm going to start talking. Now, right now, the GoPro is picking up my voice and processing that it is the dominant thing that it should be making uh, the king of its audio file. And it's going to be dulling down any of the other noises in the ambient background, not that we have any at the moment. The thing with this audio track is that the processor takes a little bit of time to catch up when there is a change in audio. And what this means is if you're near a road, if you're near a waterfall, uh, say you drop your GoPro, you bang it, you bump it, something happens that makes a louder noise. It automatically tries to mute down the high noise that just happened, like the traffic or the big crash of a plate in the background. So it dulls that down. And in doing so, it dulls down the dominant thing, which will be your voice like mine now. To replicate this, what I'm going to do is tap on the case of the working GoPro at the moment and you'll hear how it dulls everything down it takes just a few seconds to come back and then i'm going to show you how to avoid running into issues when you go to your post-production and your voice has been washed out because of a loud noise in the background so here we go we're going to bang on the case 
and you should be able to hear that the audio takes some time to come back and now by now you should be able to hear my voice the trick is to quite simply talk to your GoPro before you film the thing that you want to film so if we tap this again and I say talking 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 well at this stage the GoPro has picked up my voice saying talking I know that it doesn't really matter me saying talking and I can continue on telling you about what I want to tell you about with the GoPro having worked it out. This works in all situations with traffic and waterfalls and everything else that I mentioned before. It's something very ing ingenuity that GoPro have put into this, but it's very underutilized and not very well understood. There's not an issue with the GoPro audio. It is a little bit slow, but if you give it the correct amount of time and you know what you're doing, it'll come back and work for you every single time. The last thing you want to do with your GoPro when you're in post is add cinema bars. Now cinema bars add this next level quality, they look awesome, they make you feel like you're watching a movie and they're just so easy to add in, so why wouldn't you? It takes your GoPro footage to the next level. So there you have it guys, they're my tips and tricks for using a GoPro. This will make your footage look better and it does take a little bit of practice getting used to some of these settings and do not be afraid to experiment. GoPros work fantastic out of the box, uh, they're designed for people to just grab them, head out to where they want it and start filming. But you can make your footage that much better by just changing a few settings. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Peace and I'm out.